Today, we're going to break down the AMM or the Automated Market Maker XLS 30D and what that could mean for future financial markets and how you can use it to create income. So we've seen automated market makers launched on other networks like Ethereum and Solana. Basically, they just mash buy and sell orders across exchanges. If you can envision, a lot of people are familiar with, you know, Sam Bankman fried and FTX. But originally how he made his money was he would buy Bitcoin on one exchange. He would send it to another exchange where it was trading at a higher price and he would sell it there. And that's how people arbitrage a market, right? So... Uh, a market maker is somebody that aggregates all of the buy and sell orders across multiple exchanges or people that provide those services into one centralized location uh, between two things that are being traded and allows you to um, basically source buyers and sellers on both of those items. So let's say it's US dollars versus Bitcoin. A liquidity pool or an AMM uh, would work as a brokerage. Um, and aggregate all of the trading across, you know, all of the different um, exchanges uh, that they had access to for USD versus Bitcoin. They would be aggregated there, uh, and then people would be able to buy and sell on that ecosystem. And obviously, that's a pretty liquid ecosystem, so people are willing to buy and sell, and um, that's not a problem. You're you're going to have people fill orders. The problem comes when you have very illiquid trading between two assets. So let's say it was, uh, as an example, a nascent coin that has just been launched or early stage ICO, and maybe something else that doesn't have a whole lot of liquidity. Most of the time, they'll tie those into Ethereum or Bitcoin or UST uh, because those are the most liquid markets um, so that at least one side of the pool does have a lot of liquidity. Uh, and then, you know, by proxy, the other side can get some liquidity from the other side. Uh, in an automated market maker, uh, on the X, XRP ledger, it, it solves a couple different problems that exist for traditional market makers. Uh, one uh, is the, the native DEX that's built into the network um, allows for it to be agnostic. So, you know, any issued assets on the XRPL uh, can be traded within these pools. Uh, the Xchain Bridge, which we'll talk about later on in another video, um, potentially, you know, allows even things outside of XRP's ecosystem to be traded within these pools at a later date once that's passed. The main friction uh, for a lot of this stuff, if there's not, you know, one side of the pool that already has a ton of liquidity, is the liquidity itself. Uh, so with these AMMs, people can use their XRP uh, or another fungible token uh, that's issued on the XRPL uh, to provide liquidity to those ecosystems and earn rewards for doing so. Um, this doesn't really exist in, in other... Uh, automated market makers um, on other networks. Uh, and if it does, uh, it doesn't have the tax advantages uh, that are created on the XRPL. So uh, in those other ecosystems, like I mentioned earlier, uh, Sam Bateman Free would arbitrage Bitcoin, right? People do the same thing. They will buy low and sell high and generating the spread for themselves. Uh, here in these automated market makers, the people that are providing liquidity to the pools actually capture a portion of that. And so how does that work? Well, there's a fixed number of LP tokens that are initially put in the pool uh, that are represented by the liquidity or the people that have put assets into the pool. Uh, and the people that arbitrage these markets have to bid for that opportunity. So when I spoke to David Schwartz last year, he mentioned that he thought that people would be willing to bid somewhere between 90 and 98% of the profit that they felt that they could earn over the 24-hour period for the opportunity to trade with no fees. So normally, uh, these automated market makers on the XRPL do charge fees uh, for you to trade within those ecosystems. Um, and that's variable anywhere from zero all the way to 1,000 basis points, uh, up to 1% basically uh, per transaction. Uh, is what they do charge. And that, is, again, is paid out to the people that are providing liquidity to the pool, along with uh, what the people bid for those opportunities over the 24 hours uh, to be able to arbitrage the marketplace with no fees. So, uh, you know, if, if you're making small spreads, and that's what's going to be the consequence of, you know, the aggregation of, you know, all of these marketplaces into one liquidity pool, um, that are trading between two assets is the, the spreads are going to come much tighter. 
Uh, and so therefore you're going to need to be able to trade without any fees to really make any meaningful money. Uh, so people will be willing to bid uh, for those opportunities. And the amount that they bid would go again back into the pool and those get burnt. And so as long as you're not taking distributions from the pool in LP tokens, uh, your value continues to increase supply and demand, right? So you still need the same amount of liquidity or potentially more depending on the value of the assets. It uh, could be less, you know, if the assets in the pool uh, that are trading decrease in value. Uh, but if they are going to increase in value, um, you would need more liquidity over time. So you actually get the appreciation of the assets uh, that you're providing liquidity to, along with the arbitrage uh, and then whatever fees are being charged uh, to the participants to be able to trade within that ecosystem. So three different mechanisms. The underlying fee, which is the, the base points per trade, uh, you're getting uh, the arbitrage or what people are, are willing to bid uh, to participate in that ecosystem, and then also the appreciation of the underlying assets uh, that are being traded within the pool. So those are the three ways that you'd be able to earn yield uh, if you are providing liquidity to the AMMs uh, on the XRPL. Uh, it's a huge amendment that's been passed. I think we have uh, like $3 million worth of uh, $3 million worth of XRP locked up in uh, liquidity pools that have been created since the amendment has been passed. It took um, Uniswap months to aggregate that much liquidity uh, into their ecosystem when they launched. But, um, you know, people that hold XRP are willing to experiment and earn a yield on their asset. And so we've seen some pretty significant adoption in a short term, uh, in a short time period. So uh, excited about it. Uh, this is just the first step in DeFi on, on the XRPL. Um, and there are, you know, other amendments that we will discuss in other videos uh, that add to this, that really create uh, a position where this can be adopted by traditional markets uh, and used at scale. So hopefully, if you didn't really understand why this mattered or how you'd be able to earn income off of it, this answered some of those questions. And if you do have further questions, we're happy to answer those as well. Please comment down in the comments below like, subscribe, and we will see you on the next one.